Okay, I was maybe gonna run out there after. I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they're not on it. Right there. Okay. You're authorizing us to send that money to their trust account. Yes. We closed on the farm, and now I'm gonna head out there. I really wasn't expecting to close today. I thought it could be a couple weeks, and this whole process kind of got delayed, but we're gonna go check it out, so. Man, I hope it's not too windy, but here's the farm. So the first part of this video is gonna be kind of an intro to me, and then the second part is gonna be a farm tour of this. This is 120 acres here, and it's, it's not all tillable. I'll kind of run you guys through it. There's about 70 tillable acres here. Uh, the other 50 is kind of through draws. It's a lot of really patchy ground through here. And then there's probably 26 acres of bottom ground that will sometimes flood. But this is my first farm. I'm gonna chasing the dream of being a first generation farmer, going after it. We're going from farm sim to real life farming. Uh, it's always been a dream and I'll kind of get into that here. So I grew up in central Iowa and this farm's technically in central Iowa, you could call it, but it's still 50 minutes, 50 minutes if you're flying on the interstate or about an hour away from where I grew up. And so I grew up in a town of like 50, 60,000 people. And essentially like everybody from my town, nobody really farmed. If you were kind of interested in farming, you're kind of an outlier. And so I got interested in farming at a young age because my grandparents farmed in North, Northern Iowa. And so one side of my mom's side of grandparents, they eventually sold everything in 2005. My dad's side uh, still farms to this day. My grandpa passed away, but my uncles run that operation. I have three different uncles that farm. So when I was younger, I was pretty much always around their operation. It was about two hours away from where I grew up. So every weekend, I was pretty much begging to go up there. And so growing up in the city, that's kind of how I got the passion for farming is I was up there every weekend just with my grandma at my grandma's house. And then when my uncles would come over to do chores or farm that day, I would just go out and help them all up until I was probably 13, 14. And then I got going with activities. And I still remember during school, I'd be sitting in the classroom just mentally dreaming about like going up there to farm and stuff and but essentially you kind of realize like it's not going to work out you're probably not going to be able to like just jump into an operation that's kind of far relatives so farm sim came in and i started playing farm sim when i was a sophomore in high school and we started a youtube channel and i didn't even actually start that youtube channel it was one of my buddies that came over and he was like hey you want to start a gaming youtube channel and i was like sure what game are we going to play and so we played tons of games. We, we just wanted to play the most popular games that were just coming out because we knew that'd be getting searched the most on, on YouTube. And so, and so we played tons of games. Eventually, Farming Simulator 2015 came out. And then that's when I started, started playing Farming Simulator. And I always loved farming, so playing that game was absolutely fun. And so you look back five, six years later, after college, I just graduated college in, uh, in May here. After college, we're officially playing farming similar still, but we're chasing after the dream, the always passion dream of farming. And so it's 120 acres. It's, it's not much, but at some point you have to start with something. And so through my head, I was running through all the ways to start farming really. And it's one, you can either save up for a huge operation and try to buy infrastructure with a farm, grain bins, buildings, and then try to buy like 200, 300 acres around that. And that'd probably be a lot of years down the road before I kind of got to that. And so this farm came up and I want a farm that it's not just a flat 80 or flat 160, but a farm that's cheaper ground that you can do some improvements on and buy smaller parcels in the area and kind of grow. So essentially we're kind of going from plain farming similar to real life farming. That's kind of how I made the money to be able to purchase these farms. And when I say farms, I'm buying, we just closed on this one and then we're super super close to closing on another 90 acres about 12 miles away from here that will be two nice farms it'll be a really good starting point uh we'll see if that deal gets closed i don't want to show it off yet because just in case it doesn't get closed like this one just in case this didn't get closed i didn't want to show it off ahead of time so kind of part two of the video i'm gonna do more of a farm tour of this walk the whole farm i don't have an atv or anything so it'll take me probably about an hour to walk this whole farm I'll kind of just show you guys features. It's really just kind of a, a patchy farm, meaning the biggest field here is 15 acres and the smallest field's about four acres. And so, for example, here's a four, four to five acre patch right here. Um, and this most likely is gonna be a building site. I plan to put up some type of building. Now I do have to, so we're on that four acre patch back here that I first started on. 
I gotta figure out some type of road system to get to these patches because if you get a road system, some type of build up through here, it would literally save so much time to get to kind of this back 40. Otherwise, you kind of gotta go on the gravel road and go all the way around. But the thing is, is there's a giant pond right here and this is basically a dam that's holding up that pond. It'll drain out of here, drain down through there and it'll eventually go into that, that creek that goes to the river. And it looks like at one point they did have a little roadway through here. And then there's the neighbor's pond. It'd be real nice to own one of those just to kind of add to the recreational value of this farm. Also, I, I really apologize if I'm crazy excited here because this has been a dream forever to start farming. We're finally chasing after it. So another thing about this farm that I probably forgot to mention is, is that I actually started looking at this in April-ish, late April-ish. And so that was right before, right when I was graduating college, I kind of started looking at this farm. And so it, right about that June time frame, June of this summer, and this is kind of the big surprise that I was like, oh man, it's gonna be so exciting. And I kept saying it in the farm sim videos that oh, this is, it's gonna be real exciting what's happening. And I was supposed to close like in July on this farm. Well, and also with the closing, I was, there was actually a corn crop here that I was gonna harvest. And so I was gonna have to get like a 6620 and kind of an older tractor and start harvesting this real quick and try to find a place to kind of store it during the winter. Um, but I didn't end up harvesting that crop because what happened is there's a lot of stuff that went on with the seller. Uh, essentially they need liquidity for this farm and that happens, you need liquidity, you need to sell off some properties uh, to buy some other stuff. And this took forever and there's there was tons of stuff with lawyers and you know, probably in that July, August time frame, I was like, we, we thought for sure this was gonna close. I was supposed to close in like two days. They're like, oh, it's getting pushed back a week, then a week, then a week. And here we are in December and we, we finally closed on the farm. I got that call today, this morning, right when I woke up, got a call. It's like, hey, we can close today. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I got super excited. Today's been just crazy. I, I didn't think we were gonna close this soon. Along a lot of these patches, the previous owners didn't really mow, they didn't knock down any trees. And so along a lot of these, there's probably 20 feet of just kind of trees and brush that would be real nice to clean on out. Like all of this through here and all that back there. Of course, that's probably gonna require just a little more than a skid steer, uh, probably an excavator, which I do wanna get going here soon. I wish I, I should have brought the drone to fly over to really show these, these uh, patches off. But essentially through most of these, there's kind of some creek bottoms through there and oh there's some deer going they must be cutting out over on oh there they go there they go oh. nice that's a good sign so this down here is probably what's going to make an interesting youtube video we got to find some way to drain water out of there or either put a culvert over there to get equipment through there there's about 13 14 acres on the other side of here that these guys come in in the fall and they always tear it up uh, down through here or they probably get stuck. Here's the draw where we kicked up those deer and all the water kind of comes down through here and it sits it sits in this valley which then runs right to the river. There's a river right there. Now all this grass you guys see out here, this is all CRP. They should have either burned off the CRP a long time ago. I, I think it's at least one, I, I don't know the correct uh, regulation with CRP but I think you gotta burn it off maybe every couple of years or mow it or at least kind of maintain the CRP. And it wasn't maintained at all. There's a lot of, I wish I knew the tree. I don't know the tree, but there's a lot of kind of trees, probably 10 to 20 foot tall back there that we gotta pull out to be in regulation with the CRP. This is all river bottom. This will flood probably about every eight years. This is the 13 acre, 12 acre patch. It might be 15 acres that I was talking about through here. Now, through some of these, there's kind of a lot of mini waterway issues. I guess the waterways aren't that big. They're just kind of sloping downhill. But there's, there's a couple of issues with them. Uh, one is that the waterways, and the waterways seem to be so full that a lot of the water's kind of just eroded down the side of the waterway because that waterway's higher than, that waterway's higher than, uh, than the ground next to it. So essentially it just erodes down there. So one thing, we'll see if we get to it, but with the nice weather we're having, maybe we can get to it this fall, is to kind of come in with the skid steer and kind of scrape these back and dig them out and push them back so that the water actually gets into the waterway. So here we're kind of at the northwest corner of the property and you can kind of see the fence line based on the overgrown trees that are there. But it cuts off right back there and then just wraps around here. Something again that I'd like to get done is to get these overgrown trees out of here. So that way we can yank the fence, talk to the neighbors, 
just kind of make a line and get those overgrown trees that are just robbing uh robbing r water and nutrients from the from the crops it's not too big a deal but it'd just be something a little nice to clean up the farm so back there's that 13 acres 26 acres of TRP out here. But here's that crossing where, like I said, I gotta figure out something to get across this to where in the middle of summer after rain or a couple days after rain, this is gonna be wet. This is probably gonna be wet all summer. Either option A I think of, if you guys have any have any other options that you guys know of, let me know or things you guys do on your guys' farm. But option A is to either kind of come with some giant rocks here and make it a Missouri River crossing to where we'll just have rocks and water will run through it. And I think option B is just to build it up and put a giant culvert under it. So that way when you cross this, you're always dry and it'll just kind of go right up there. So it would probably take a lot of fill dirt to fill that in and put a culvert there, but I kind of want to go with the culvert scenario as long as it doesn't wash out. So here's the other 15 acres. All, uh, here's the other 15 acres across here. This is some of the best soil on the farm uh, right up through here. There's about eight acres of 90 CSR2 soil. We're kind of happy to see what we can grow for yields there. Water must run down through here and there's, you can see that erosion right there that runs, and then it runs right alongside the waterway. So gotta be two or three feet deep along there and it doesn't even push into the waterway. It, it more or less just runs right alongside of it. Oh, nice. The seller left some corn for me. This guy didn't develop the best. But essentially these guys, as you can see, they farm up the waterway and they farm up around the waterway. And I'd like to just farm through the waterway so that way we don't have erosion running down the side. So it'd be nice to get this cleaned out, make it kind of flat on the bottom, and then be able to take the planter and just farm through it and up the hill right there instead of along the side. So that's the plan. These are just things I want to get done, but I don't know if it'll happen this fall or this spring here. If we do these projects, most of them would happen in the spring for sure. So, so I still got to show you guys about the 15 acres over on that side of the hill. But a lot of you guys are going to be asking, well, what equipment are you going to be going with? And this is something I've been digging into all summer and just researching, trying to find the right equipment. And I want to get, I want to probably have one main tractor. I don't think I really need two for this, especially if I get the other farm. That'd be around. We'll see what happens. And if that goes through, I don't, I shouldn't even be talking about it yet because I haven't officially signed any documents. Um, but that'd be around 150 acres tillable. So you really don't need too much. So I want to pause the video real quick. I did end up getting the other, I got a call last night when I was editing this, that the other 90 acres is going through. So that is 90, it's 88 acres technically. And then there's 85 tillable acres on that farm. It's a, you know, it's a completely all tillable farm, but the soils on the farm isn't the best. You know, it's below county average. It's nothing amazing, but that farm's not gonna close for like two or three months. So once that closes, I'll kind of do a tour of that. Uh, I wanna get one main tractor, most likely deer, probably a 7,000 or 8,000 series tractor that can A, pull a gravity wagon, uh, can B, pull a six, eight, or 12 row planter. I really don't think I need a 12 row, but with the way prices are going, that might not be a bad idea. I talked to Cole and uh, Iowan farmer and they're like, just get a 12 row. It's so much cheaper and I was like, that's kind of big for these four acre patches and stuff. So I don't know. And I kind of want farming to, or planting to take a while. I want to enjoy it and have fun. So maybe a six row or eight row won't be bad, but we'll see on there. As far as tractor, I do want to get a tractor bought here before the year ends. Today's date is, it's the 10th. I should know that I closed today, but today's December 10th. And so that basically puts it at, as I want to get a tractor bought in the next 20 days. I'll keep it at my dad's shed, kind of back where we live. He has a shed outside of town. So I'll keep it there and eventually drive it down here. And then once summer comes, I'll probably be on the search for a combine and gravity wagon if all goes to plan. Obviously we close on this. I gotta focus on getting that crop ground, that crop in the ground coming here in uh, April and May. So I got, that's my main thing. As far as tillage, I really don't think this needs to be, unless I were to go corn on corn, we may do that, go corn on corn, and you'd probably want to at least chop up the stalks a little bit with like a little vertical till disc or something light. But I don't need that big of tillage equipment and I don't plan to do any deep tillage. But if you guys have ideas for tractors, equipment, anybody that farms 150 or 100 to anywhere 200 to 300 acres, and they kind of have an idea of their thoughts on a planter size, maybe originally they thought they only need a six row and then they were like, hey, I actually need a 12 row. If you kind of have an opinion on planter size or anything like that, that's my biggest concern right now. So if you made it this far, thanks for watching the whole thing. I know I sometimes get kind of boring and stuff in there, uh, but essentially this is gonna be mainly a farming channel. 
In the winter, we do different fun activities that I'll probably include, like we go snowmobiling, and then any purchases kind of making, if I'm going to look at equipment in the wintertime, I'll make a video on that, or if we're working on equipment, I'll make a video on that. Uh, but, so the squad channel is gonna be Farm Sim. This channel, I think it's just gonna be my name, I've been trying to think of a good channel name for like kind of farming, but for now, I'm just gonna keep it the name. And then most likely the squad Instagram, because it's kind of tough to post farming simulator content on Instagram. The squad Instagram's probably gonna turn into this farming channel's Instagram. So we'll post different farming pics, uh, just different things, updates on how the farm's going on there. That's probably what's gonna happen. Uh, and Spencer's gonna help me some of the time too, which is gonna be nice. And then my dad's also gonna help me. He grew up on a farm, but doesn't farm in real life, so. But anyways, guys, uh, seriously, thanks for watching. And uh, if, if you have any comment down in the comment section, I'll, I'll really try to answer all these, so. So, seriously, guys, thanks for watching. Hey, I'll see you guys later.